in this video we are going to see how to export shapes to G-code using Inkscape. We are going to use Inkscape Laser Plugin by JTEC Photonics. And here's the website. You have information here as well if you want to learn how it works. So the beginning of this video is basically just how to install the plugins and the rest of it is how to use it. So let's click here download and overview and we get more info how the plugin works and how you are supposed to use it. Let's click the download again and you should get these files on your computer as a zip file. So I've already extracted these and then let's get the Inkscape. So I'm just go ahead and click download, select your operating system using OSX, so OSX version and I also need to download the XQuartz which is basically a X window system for OSX. So let's go ahead and install that first before installing Inkscape though it doesn't really matter which one you install first. So on OS X you just drag and drop it to your applications folder and that's how you install it. I already had it so I'm just gonna replace it and let's see. Now it's in the applications folder and when I try to open it it says that I'm not allowed because it's not signed. So let's go to the system preferences, security and privacy and set the allow apps downloaded from anywhere and now we should get it open. Okay, just click open and here we go. So when your plugin is properly installed it will be on the extensions menu. There's already G-code tools but we are not gonna use it for this project. So let's open terminal because it's a hidden folder and you cannot see in the finder. So I'm going to type cd.config, cd inkscape and then go to the extensions folder. Now I'm going to type open and dot and that will open the finder for this folder. So I already had the plugins here in a folder but it didn't work. So what you need to do is just directly put them to the extensions folder and that way you can get them to show up in the Inkscape extensions folder. So now when I open the extensions folder I have the new plugin installed. On the settings we need to specify a directory where this plugin will output the g-code files. So again I'm going to use terminal and I should already have made a folder. Let's see where it is. So the users, my username, which is edit for this machine, and G code. And here we already had, had one, so I'm gonna use this folder and now put it to the directory. And on OS X, it does matter if you use capital letters. So here we go, set close, and now I just check that it's saved there, so it was. And now we can start the drawing. I'm going to draw a, a square, set the uh, measurements to millimeters. Let's make this um, maybe 10 by 10 millimeters. And move it uh, closer to the zero point. So the field should be set to none. So here you can change it. And the stroke should be on. So if I set it off, there's nothing we can see. Set the stroke on, change it to millimeters, and let's put it to 0 0.1 millimeter. So now we have a square here. And now let's go to the extensions and our G code. So the we are using the default values, hit apply. Now we got the coordinates here. 
but it didn't really uh, generate the G code properly because we don't see the direction arrows. So I'm gonna show it what it made. Let's open it up. So here we only got the plate parameters, so nothing to actually work for. What you need to do is let's undo this, select the object and then go to path and object to path. And once you've done this, let's try it again. Hit apply. And now we can see that it made it correctly. And let's see the cheat code as well. So I'm gonna open it up. G code three. And here we go. Now it's probably generated. So keep in mind when you're doing this that you might have to use the pad and change the object to pad. So now you have the G code and on previous video we already went through how to send codes using the universal G code sender so you can just use this directly from there. For these values you can get more information on the JTEC website um, but it's pretty much trial and error with different materials to see what works and what doesn't. So I'm gonna go through those on future videos. So the plugin we used, it's mainly useful for cutting and engraving single lines. And there's also on the same website, you can see this peak laser photo engraving. So if you want to engrave some text with fill or some images with different values, you can check this out and you can get pretty amazing results with this but it needs a, a custom firmware and it costs some money so that's one thing to explore there is also some other raster plugins for Inkscape so for example I think I have this called uh, raster to laser and you can find this with Google it's pretty similar to the one we already went through but I haven't still used this much so maybe in the future videos I will go through it more detailed the next video is hopefully going to be cutting some plywood or maybe the machine modifications and in the best case maybe both